Hello everyone, Bobby here for Xbox Gamer Reviews and today we're going to take a look at Raid World War 2. It was brought to you by Starbreeze, those are the same guys who brought you Payday. Um, what we're going to do today is just jump straight in and play the tutorial. I was going to do a mission but they can be a little bit long winded. Um, so rather than now drag on, we'll jump straight into the tutorial, let you have a look around and go from there. Control, so uh, listen carefully, please. The situation is this Hitler is winning, so we need drastic measures, and you are those measures. You're the best, most capable killers we can find. Your skills are second to none, you're survivors, and you get the job done. And the job that we need doing is winning this war. Churchill has given us a mission. Attack the Reich any way we can. In short, set Europe ablaze, as it were. Our target, Hitler. That short ass crowd, this nasty Nazi friends and everything they stand for. We will be merciless. No rules. This isn't a gentleman's war. Blast their trains, blow their bridges, burn the enemy alive. Now, having read your files, I don't expect fellows like you to do this uh, purely out of sense of duty. So if a little Nazi gold happens to go missing, no questions will be asked. History won't remember you, but uh, your deeds will define it. Good luck. Lovely valley, nice built with guards, pop into the church. Right. Looks like a guard up ahead. Crouch is B, just so you all know. Uh, it tells you there. Left stick is move around, right stick is look around. Um, right trigger is obviously attack. We've got the knife equipped at the minute, so we're just gonna kill him. Pick him up by holding right bumper. So very much like Payday 2 for disposing of the bodies and the controls. We'll just close that. Where we've got to go now? Take the ammo. Oh, we've got to lockpick the gate. If you push left stick in, by the way, you run. Come on, you little. There Line that up nice and easy. While put with a primary weapon. Just so you know, um, left on the D-pad brings up your grenade. Right on the D-pad brings out your knife if you want to go stealth, and again you just press Y and Y again for your primary and secondary. Got a lock pick another gate. Oh, missed that one. How's your father? Apples away! Do we love it when things get a bit of that? Left trigger makes you aim down the side. Nice and simple. Use your war cry to kill the Nazis. That's an airdrop coming in. Go, go, go! Get a move on! Warcry highlights some for you. Notice he's getting back up though. I thought putting enough bullets in him would have downed him, but obviously not. Oh, and he's not dead. Right. Death's door, eh? Delightful. I dare say I should stop the chain. Pull that. We'll go down here. Lock pick the crate. Heal yourself. It auto heals when you pick it up as well. Ah, you've 
gotten the radio working. Excellent. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mrs. White, and Control has asked me to supervise the RAID project. You can use this radio to contact other RAID operatives and join forces with them on missions. Likewise, they can use their radios to join you, should you choose to allow them. Oh, the next one. As well as helping you unwind between missions, this card table is ideal for perusing your collection of challenge and booster cards. Challenge cards can be used to make a mission harder, in return for increased rewards, while booster cards can be used to give you a temporary advantage against the enemy. So, so far, we've basically got a station where you can join up with other people to play some of the missions. And we've got a table that gives you booster cards. Well, you can select your booster cards. What we've got in here. Here, you'll be able to recruit and switch between different raid members to take on missions. The more sartorially minded can also decide which outfits their operatives will wear. So that one is character selection. I believe you can have up to four or five different ones, um, different classes, things like that. You just switch them out over there. What's this one? The weapons bench is where you can upgrade your armaments, and importantly, where you'll choose your loadout before going on missions. So as you um. As your level increases, you can see in the bottom left, I'm only level 3 because I've just started. As it increases, you unlock different weapons, you can upgrade them, things like that. Uh, that's what you do there. And what's this one? Is this the last one? This training area is where you'll be able to expand and hone your raid team's talents and abilities. Like she said, training area, you can expand the talents. I'll unpack this one. I'm sure don't have to tell you to be on the lookout for opportunities to misplace a little Nazi gold. If you do happen to come across some, you might want to consider using some of it to spruce up this place. The maps table is where you'll find briefings and intel for every mission I make available to you. And is where you choose which mission to execute next. Oh, dog tags. When you're out in the field, be sure to keep a lookout for the dog tags of fallen Allied soldiers. Collecting them will allow us to inform their families of their fates. And don't worry, you'll be rewarded for your efforts. Right, so just to recap. When she shuts up. You get some rest before embarking on your first mission. Mrs. White, over and out. Just to recap, you've got dog tags, which are basically collectibles. You find them um, in each mission. I think there's around about 30 to 35 per mission, something like that. Um, this is your mission select. This is where you can join another person's mission to team up with other people online. You can play it offline by yourself as well with AI. Uh, you've got your booster cards to use on your missions, um, character selection, and, and obviously outfits to wear and things like that. Um, weapons, upgrade weapons as well. Over here is training, and then you've got the gold, where basically some missions um, you can pick up gold and take it with you. A bit like in Payday 2, if you've played that way. You'd go into I don't know the bank and you bag up the gold and bag up the the cash, take it back to the vehicle. You're basically doing that in missions. And there's the one that I played. Um, you are robbing a, a vault and there was a hell of a lot of gold there. So if you can't get it out, you can save it up. It's not going to let us select it right now because I'm in the training. But you can buy just different upgrades like your, your desks that you're going to um, can be upgraded to nicer looking ones. And I'm assuming the more you buy, the more all this rubble gets cleared out. Even the bomb in the middle that's got Adolf Road on it, you can get a gold one of them. So it is more just of a raid base upgrade. But yeah, that that's pretty much it for the for the raid room. Um, is there anything that else that I chose you if I go here? Yeah, then that loads just straight back in. This is where you can select the missions and whatnot. Uh, exactly the same as where we just were, but for some reason you have to finish the training mission. So just to show you, you can select weapons. So my primary. 
I can have a Sten Mark II or an M1 carbine. I've just literally unlocked that before I made the video. Um, secondary by pressing right bumper across. I've got the C96 Morsa, I think that's called. And then your melee, I've got a German knuckle duster that I've just unlocked or a M3 combat knife. Um, these are basically like your perks kind of thing. If you remember in Payday where you would select your perks that you'd have throughout, you get to pick one um, out of the three allocated there as you go along. So as you can see, I can either have Iron Jaw, which you take less damage from enemy melee attacks, Evasive take less damage when sprinting, or concentration take less damage when interacting with locks, creates another object. Uh, I get to select one of them and then move on to the next. And I am going to take the evasive one. So you press A on that and then Y to apply it. Yes. And there you go. That's what you do on the training. And I'll show you the gold. These are the items that you can buy to upgrade. But obviously, it says in the bottom right, you've got to have 500 gold for that. 100 for a Persian rug, uh, gold trim artworks is 150, luxury toilet, uh, the bomb that I was talking about previously, and then just mission desk, card table, upright piano, uh, luxury character table, armor's bench, and a gold frame portrait. So obviously they're all quite a bit, and I think I only picked up something like six gold in one of the missions. You only had to have four, and we got six or something like that. Um, hopefully get on with a full team of four and wipe that place out, you'll get a good few hundred off it. Um, these are all your missions when it wants to load. Here we go. Odin's Fall is um, the first one that you should really play. You can stealth it as well if you take your time. Gold Rush is the one that I've done, which I was saying there was loads of gold. Um, the Train one also has gold, I believe. Is it that one? No, it's Train Wreck. That one has gold on it as well. Um, so all these are ones worth looking out at. You've got your raids and then you also have operation. If you press right bumper. Um, I'm assuming, I've never tried this yet, but if you select the slot, you can start one of the operations and it'll just be a single player. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got radio. It seems to be offline because I'm in offline mode, obviously. You can view the cards here, but I don't have any, so you must collect them or unlock them throughout the way. And uh, this is where you can select your character. We've got Sterling, he's level 3, that's who I've made, and obviously you can make new ones as you go. But yeah, that's pretty much it. This has been my first look at Raid World War 2. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to stick a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We do really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you next time.